Hi, this is Travis. Welcome to the homestead. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a cold one today. Whew. Taking a set down after getting a bunch of my chores done. I think I've got most of my outside chore work done, other than a few projects. Whew. So if I'm a little out of breath or coughing because of the cold, please forgive me. So this video could be one that <clears throat> I get a, some negative response from some people, um, especially uh, more liberal feminist. although I don't know that there'd be too many people that fall under that that would be watching this channel. But hey, if you do, that's great. Maybe you can learn something. Uh, it's a discussion that my wife and I have been having lately. Uh, actually last week I believe it was we went to town and um, that was pretty much what we talked about the whole trip into town was about this subject um, and I know that in today's world it's kind of a taboo for a man to be talking about some of these things and that is modesty um, morals holiness uh, maybe you're not a follower of the way the book uh, just being good <laughs> and teaching it to our children and again I know that uh, <clears throat> there's gonna be there maybe not but there would be women out there that would say hey as a man you don't have a right to teach tell me about uh, modesty and stuff okay if that's what you you know want to believe but I'm the father of three daughters uh, all of them under 11 and so as a father of three daughters I think I do have the right to speak about Mo teaching modesty to our children and not just girls either boys also and in teaching them um, <clears throat> to not be part of this world and to not partake uh, in Babylon of Babylon's uh, uh, wickedness in case any of you are not aware of this uh, this world is a wicked uh, vulgar place anymore I mean it's 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 getting worse it's always been that way but it's it's just progressively getting worse and what I mean by that is I can think back to when I was a child um, say music movies uh, th things that kids talked about or did are now nothing compared to what's going on and I'm sure it was the same way I know it was because I was told this in my parents generation how it's just progressively getting worse and uh, unfortunately I see too many people even people that follow you know God's Word that well you know it's just the changing of the times and blah 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 and you know they kinda shrug it off and it's like no it's not it's not just you know it's not just a oh well you know it's just how things are uh, you need to read the book and see what it says about it because it's it talks about this and it's our duty as parents men specifically and I'm speaking to you although you know women don't you know, ladies don't think that you can just turn off of this because, you know, there's a lot here for you also. If you are parents or you have uh, children in your lives that you influence, it is your duty to teach them these things. Now, before I get too much further, I know that there's going to be people saying, what's this have to do with homesteading and preparedness and all that? Um, I think it has a lot to do with homesteading in the sense that it's one of the major reasons why we live the way we do. Uh, because of our children um, you know we don't live like this just so that we can have fun out in the woods and and uh, go around playing pioneers and stuff and, and you know that's fun and enjoyable but that's not one of the real reasons why we do it the real one of the main reasons that we've come out of you know the world is to show our children a more righteous lifestyle and, and to teach them holiness and it's really hard to do when you're surrounded by wickedness um, you know, think of uh, Lot and his family in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was, you know, very difficult, I'm sure, for him to, you know, try to continue to be holy and follow Yah's uh, ways when he was surrounded by uh, all the wickedness uh, that he was. So that's, that's a reason, a major reason why we live the way we do. So I think that this type of thing does uh, pertain to homesteading. Um, you know, we have a duty, especially as men, but as parents in general, to teach our children um, about modesty, uh, 
about holiness, about uh, living a life that, and, and teaching them that that the things of this world that they see that are popularized, that are, you know, uh, even if you try to restrict those things in, in your home, they're still going to be exposed to them at certain, some point in time. Um, teach them that that these things are, are, are wrong. They're they're against Yah's uh, will, and they are they're just they lead down to a path of destruction. And I just, you know, it was funny. I said that the other day, I don't know, it was a week or so ago, we went to town and, again, this was something that we talked about. And, and you know, we talked about it specifically from a, a woman's standpoint. My wife was, uh, I wish we had taped that. Uh, that would have been a good video to put, put on. Um, and then it was, it just so happened we stopped to fill up the tank of the vehicle. And we're sitting at the gas station. And I remind, remember, you know, we're talking about a small little country town, so we're not, you know, in the big city in some urban area. It's a small little country town, and this little car pulls up next to us to fuel up. And, you know, there was three or four uh, boys in there. I say boys because obviously, apparently, at least one of them was old enough to drive, but they didn't look much over, you know, 15 to 17 years old. And they were blaring the radio loud, which, hey, I did it in my day too when I was that age. But the song, oh my word, I mean, I'm, I'm not so, you know, I, I don't live under a rock so much that I'm not aware that the music has, you know, horrible, vile language in it. I get that. But this, I, I, have, I have no clue who it was, what song or anything, and I would never repeat it. It was unbelievably horrible. The, the lyrics, you know, as the guy sitting on the other side of the gas pump, fill, you know, putting gas in this kid my word you know that that's you know i can remember when i was a kid when music you know the lyrics started getting worse and worse and worse uh but it was just unbelievable i was really shocked and again i don't consider myself living under a rock but whew, it just you know thought that man, that's what kids are listening to no wonder our world is in the shape that it's in uh, you know, when that's the type of stuff that's that's filling their head, and you know it went right along with our discussion of of teaching our children, you know, not just to do this, but why we do this. What why is it important? Uh, why is it important to to dress in an appropriate manner that you're not you know you're not looking like you're putting yourself up for sale? Um, you know, there's lots of reasons, and I'm not going to really go into all the details because most of you should know this. Uh, probably just preaching to the choir this whole video. Uh, but, you know, there's predators out there uh, all over, even in small towns and out in the country. You know, it's it's not safe. It's not like it was. I can remember growing up, um, you know, we were, you know, as kids, we'd do our chores, and, you know, we were off running around riding our bikes playing in the fields we'd ride our bike into town because we lived outside of town we'd ride our bike into town and you know stop by a little taco shop and buy some quarter tacos you know things like that and and that there was never really any fear uh, we lived in a small town there was never really any fear of something happening to us and it's not that way anymore but there's also other reasons you know um the bible uh this comes from Yah's word, but it's, you know, whether you are into the word or not, it is true, because uh, whether you, that's the, that's the interesting thing about, about, you know, the, the word is, you may not believe it, but it's still, it's still true, uh, that, you know, as a man and a woman, when they give themselves to each other, when they become married, uh, their greatest gift to each other is themselves, their bodies. And what kind of gift are, are you giving uh, to your husband or, you know, men that you're giving to your wife if you've, you know, also given it to half a dozen or dozen or two dozen or a hundred other people and, and everyone in town's seen it because you flaunt it all the time and showing it off. Uh, what kind of gift are you giving, you know? But that, that's that's not much of a gift, you know? I mean, to put it in a humorous way, this is what, you know, my wife and I were talking is, you know, your wedding night, here's your gift, and, well, that's great, but, you know, 20 other guys in town's already, you know, know all about that, and everyone in town's already seen it, because you walk around showing it off, and, and the men can be the same way, um, 
the, not just in the way they dress, but their, their, their vulgarity of their mouth, their mind. Um, and, and it's our job as parents uh, to teach our children uh, that, that this type of lifestyle that is popularized and normalized uh, it, it is truly an unholy life. It is wickedness. Um, and you may say, well, you know, that's why we homeschool, that's why we live out in the country, you know, that's why we don't associate, and that's all good. You know, that, that falls into line with coming out of her, the, the wickedness and everything. But the point is, that I'm trying to make, is that your children eventually will still be exposed to that. You know, you can't raise your children, you can't live your life in a bubble. Um, I mean, you can try, but they're still going to be exposed to it. And it may not be until they leave the, you know, grow up and leave the home. So that's why it's not just abstaining from, from that exposure. It's also teaching them why, you know. And to give an example, uh, this has been a while back, our, our oldest daughter, she's 11. And, and you know, and what she did, she, she totally was innocent, didn't, didn't get it. Um, but we, you know, I set her down and talked to her. Um, she come out, we were, you know, they were doing some housework. I think she was sweeping or something like that, and she came out and she she was wearing like a button-up flannel shirt, and she had the the bottom of it kind of tied up in a in a knot, uh, you know, the bottom of the shirt, shirt tails there, the ends of the shirt tails kind of tied up in a knot, and what it did is it caused the shirt to kind of rise up, where you could see a little bit of her midsection, and I was like, why are you wearing your shirt like that? Well, I've I've seen people do that, you know. I was like, no, 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 no. no. You know, and I explained to her, I said, you know, you're, you're showing off parts of your body that, that you don't need to show off. Uh, there's no reason to have your shirt like that. And, and, you know, explained it to her that that that's not something that you need to be wearing. And, and she understood it. And it's something simple like that of, uh, you know, a lot of times with children, especially when they're younger, when they start, they're, they're just emulating. And anyone that has children should know this, that they're sponges. Uh, you can sit there and tell them all you want, teach them, you know, verbally how to do something, but they're going to watch you and they're going to emulate you. Um, you know, we've got, we've got six kids, so I've seen it and all the way from two years old up to 19 now. So I, that's how children develop predominantly is through mimicking, through, you know, watching someone else do it. And so they're, you know, they start off just mimicking these things. If they see something, they're out, you know, out at the store with us or, or, or wherever. Or maybe they're, you know, at someone's house or whatever and they're exposed to something that we're not aware of. Um, they see something like, oh, that's, that's a cool way to have your, you know, clothes or, or I really like that. And, and so they're, you know, they think, oh, well, that's popular. Well, then I'll do that. Or that music, oh, that's pop. And, and a lot of times it's, it starts off as innocence. You know, they don't, they're not meaning to, to, to do these things in a, in a wicked or a perverted way. And so it's our job as parents to kind of, um, to shield them. That, that's, that's really what we're here for, is to shield and direct and guide our children and teach them in the way um, that they should go. That, you know, that, that's our sole duty. Uh, and it's more and more difficult. Um, man, I could, I could rant on this for forever. <laughs> this is just here lately. It just seems like it's just more and more. Um, it started, not, not that, not that I wasn't aware of this because I have two other, older daughters, but, um, our youngest, um, she has, uh, she's pretty much out of diapers. She still wears one at night, um, in case she has an accident, but she's, you know, in big girl underwear. And so this has been a while back. Um, we went and bought her some. You know, not the pull-ups, but real big girl underwear. And, uh, yeah, we went to China Mart to get them. And so we're, you know, picking up big girl underwear, you know, for a two-year-old. They should just be really simple, simple underwear. Well, they don't just really make simple underwear. Um, they actually had, and I, I am not lying, I promise you. They actually had these, like, very lingerie, lacy-looking underwear uh, for a two-year-old. And I thought... Who in the world would buy this for a two-year-old child? And as we got to look, and they had it, you know, for all age groups, these very inappropriate, especially for that age, these, you know, they, they looked like a, you know, some kind of lingerie, uh, very suggestive. And I thought, you know, right there, 
here, here she is two years old and, and, and people are already putting this type of stuff on their child. Uh, you know, we're very careful of the clothing that we get them because anymore it's, it's difficult, especially for the girls. You know, boys clothing, you know, for a little kid that's got a truck or a dinosaur or, you know, a baseball player or something like that. But for girls, um, you know, skin tight at, you know, our, our next oldest, she's seven, skin tight clothes showing off parts of their body uh and, and you know we have we've you know as we've gone shopping you know there'll be a pair of pants and it'll for, for you know six seven year old girl and it'll say like sexy on the back end of it um what in the world why what kind of parent would purchase that and allow their child to wear that and so again i know i'm probably preaching to the choir and a lot of you may say hey this is this doesn't pertain to me, this isn't homesteading, this isn't preparedness, you know, I already know all this kind of stuff, you know, whatever. It, it's a rant. It's something that's just, um, you know, it seems like in the last, say, maybe two months, there's been several little things that's come across my path um, in the world and then through, in the home and then through scripture that's just kind of all been pointing together. Um, that you know we need to put so much focus and it's it's harder and harder no matter how far out you live no matter how much you have unplugged yourself uh, from the wicked world it is still becoming more and more difficult to shield our children uh, girls especially because and, and this isn't a sexist thing at all but they're in my opinion and I think there's going to be others that's going to chime in and agree that the world has definitely had you know <laughs> increased its war on young girls uh a war for their souls a war for their for their their purity uh and like i said you know you can just go to the store and look at clothing for the difference between boys and girls boys clothing pretty much just looks like the kind of stuff that i wore when i was a kid yeah you know a few things that you know we wouldn't buy them but for the most part they look like just you know, what a little boy would wear but the girls clothing oh my goodness and that's just clothing um, music, movies, um, and, and we really abstain from that kind of stuff, at least in the, the popular world, but, you know, when we do see a little bit of it, it's, it's unbelievably horrible, um, <clears throat> and, uh, so it, it, it is a true battle, um, that parents, you know, need to, need to be aware of, and for men, I'm speaking to you on this part, that is your job as a husband and a father to step up. And I don't care if your daughter is 2 years old, 7 years old, 12 years old, or 17 years old. Or if she's moved out of the house and she's 25 or whatever. Um, that's your job to step in and say, hey, that's really inappropriate. Now once she gets married, it becomes her husband's job. But you need to raise your daughter to seek out a man uh, that would also uh, step in and say, honey... I know you think that, you know, outfit that you just bought is beautiful and, you know, maybe flattering in your mind and everything, but it's really inappropriate. Uh, you really, you really need to either not wear it or kind of cover something up or, or do something different. Um, that's our job. I understand that in this popular world, this modern world, that, that that's not a man's job. That a woman can dress how she wants and looks how, how she wants. But you know what? It is. It's our job as husbands to step in. And ladies, mothers, uh, it's also your job to teach your children, especially your daughters, and teach them through your, through your actions. Show them how to, how to be appropriate, how to, to be, you know, uh, modest and, 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 and how to, not fall into this this wicked world that that's part of your job as a mother uh and you know hey I, I don't partake of the modern world so if they say that i shouldn't be saying these things to women then then whatever uh the the book tells me differently and that is our job as parents and i'm telling you like i said i could sit here and rant for a long time on this uh, because i have children and i and and we're exposed to this as much as we try to not be exposed to it it still happens and we need to be on our guard at all times as parents and, and and be aware of this it is everywhere it is in books it is in it's in everything any toys anything that that they think that a child might look and listen to i'm telling you it's there uh, so always be on guard 
uh, and teach your children why. Not just that, you know, we don't do that, but teach them why so that they understand. Uh, because uh, we're losing our children uh, to this all over. Uh, go out in public every once in a while. And like I said, we don't live in a big town, but go go out in public and just look around at the young people. Um, it's it's a scary world that we live in. We have big, big jobs as parents. Men, do your job. Women, do your job. Uh, it, it's it's very serious out there. I'm sorry for the length of this video and for the rant. Uh, maybe you guys will enjoy it or agree with it. You may hate me for it. Uh, sorry. Um, I, I don't really apologize for what I have to say. Anyways, I'm going to get off of my little soapbox here and probably switch back to normal programming of uh, preparish, preparedness uh, homesteading. <laughs> issues. I just had to do this. It's been burning a you know, hole in my heart. So, All right. Well, thank you guys and gals very much uh, for your viewership and subscribing and chiming in and talking. It it, it means a lot to me. I, I, I have fun making these videos. I'm certainly not good at it. I'm learning. But uh, thank you for your viewership and your patience. All right. Well, you guys have a great day out there. It's a little chilly where, where I'm at, but I think winter is really on its way. Uh, blessings to all of you. Shalom.